Community Church. Good morning. Good wow. morning. It looks like it's getting to be uh, winter time here. A lot of people coming from up north, back home. Um, wow, it's awesome. You know, you want to know some good news? Four times, unprompted, four times, I heard today that people knew my name and they came here because of what they saw on the internet. Four times, just today. How you like that? So it's working, isn't it? Glad to have you all here. There's a couple over there from my home stomping grounds, Old Orchard Beach. They sold their house in Old Orchard Beach, Maine, and they moved down here, and they're living in Fort Pierce. So please make the maniacs feel welcome. We always love to have more maniacs here at church. Uh, there's another couple here from Ohio that said they came because they saw us on the Internet. So that's working. God bless everybody, man. That's awesome. A couple of big announcements. A few things have happened this week. Hey, Kenny, I think your brother Bob's over here. Yeah, and don't run the green lights because your brother Bob does that all the time. <laughs> this one here, this Friday, we have an AA uh, reach out recovery group that meets in our office on Fridays. But this Friday, they have a barbecue, and they're inviting you to it. It is a recovery barbecue. <laughs> Bring a dish if you wish. It's at 6 o'clock. It'll be down here at Jetty Park um, near the parking lot in the picnic area. And uh, they will provide food for the grill. They want you to bring your family and your friends and come join them. So there's the flyers out here. You can, where's Pamo? Pamo, stick your hand in the air. She's uh, got information. Don't walk up to John the cameraman, but he has information too. When we're done church, you can see John the cameraman. Stick your hand in the air, John, so they know which one's John. Oh, it's anonymous. <laughs> so much for anonymity. There I go. Blew her right out the water. But he knows about it. <laughs> he might not be there, but he knows about it. <laughs> you know what? It's always funny when you go to these... Uh, volunteer awards and they you know hey we want to call up the the guys who do the AA groups to get their plaque and nobody goes up and I'm like wow nobody's going up but they're there they just have to stay anonymous they don't have to but they choose to the other thing that happened this week is this we sent six boxes yesterday they're going on to a ship today that's going out of Miami and they're heading over to the Philippines I want to thank all of you that donated items to go we sent six full boxes, the jumbo boxes, and the cost for that was $540 to ship them. And if you would like to support that part of this ministry, we're starting to do some world outreach. That's going to the Philippines. Um, they were $90 a box to send, which is a great deal. My lady that I know who sends things to the Philippines all the time says it's usually 110 to 135 a box. So we got great pricing. I've made an, a, uh, a relationship with the people who own the Port St. Lucie Oriental Market down on US-1 in, Stuart, in uh, Port St. Lucie, and I would like you to go support them. He said they barely made it through this season. So if you like Oriental-type food and groceries and snacks, I found these great ones called Cracker Nuts. Oh, my goodness, I'm going to go buy a case of them. But his name is Eric Luyan, and his family runs the store, and it's such a great place, and they have really neat... Um, Asian food there. So if you like to cook Asian, they're really nice people and they're very supportive of us too. They took a whole bunch of brochures and business cards yesterday with them. Um, what else do we got? Oh, Bob's going to tell you about another world outreach plan when he gets up here. We're going to start to support a school in Haiti that this, uh, this doctor down there has had going for a while and we're going to start to support that as well. So we're going to start reaching out into the world beyond just Fort Pierce, beyond just the internet. We're going to start reaching out and helping the world. Bob's going to tell you that opportunity in a minute. Um, on the front, on the very back of your bulletins, we have a new group. It's called AA Serenity Group. They're going to start meeting three times a week if you want to plug into another group. Um, we have a CODA group that meets. We have um, Miss uh, Ophelia, who taught a couple weeks ago, does a Tuesday night Bible study. And some of you missed yesterday's movie night <laughs> at 4 o'clock. Just some of you. Just some of you. It was a good time, and we didn't, write, we didn't have the right movie either because I had two copies of this disc there, and I couldn't find it, me and my organizational skills. So we watched um, The Blind Side, and it was, uh, it was very good. It was a very good movie. Um, let's open up with a word of prayer, and we'll jump into this. Oh, 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 oh. Everybody, everybody, everybody. Where's Peanut? <laughs> she just reminded me of Peanut's around here somewhere. Um, 
The 16th and 17th is the fundraising yard sale. If you have stuff and clutter around your house that you want to donate to the church for our fundraiser, it will be at the Elks. And um, Miss Peggy back here, is uh, she's the manager of the Elks here in 1520 uh, Elks in Fort Pierce. She's going to accept donations on Wednesday and Thursday if you want to drop them off. And we'll also be there at 6.30 in the morning on Friday setting up. So if you have stuff you want to swing by, we don't have a place to store it until Wednesday and Thursday, the 14th and 15th. But if you bring it to the Elks, she will make sure she stores it until we show up on Friday morning. And if you would love to come and not just look through the stuff, but come give us a hand setting up, we'd appreciate that help too. Uh, everything, we will have receipts for your tax donation, um, your tax adjustments. So those, Peggy will have a, she already has a stack of those. And uh, we don't know what it's gonna, what's going to happen, but... If you're a shopper of yard sales, come to us. If you're a supporter of the church, bring some stuff over, and we'll just have a good time. And um, I would venture to say they'll have a great lunch on Friday, too, and Saturday, right? Lunch is available there, Peg? Yes. They'll have a great lunch that you can purchase there on site. So come by. Um, if you don't come by to help, come by and have lunch and hang out with us and say hello. Okay, show them the new camper. Oh, hey, by the way, you see that big thing back there that says Shasta on the front? That's not a can of soda. <laughs> that was donated to us for our kids' ministry. Woo! Hey, did you see it? Let's see if that works again. That was donated to us for our kids' ministry. Woo! All right. <laughs> and uh, Miss Wendy's going to take the kids back there after we do our worship and song, and they're going to get to experience the new camper. After the service is all over, if you want to go get a tour, uh, go look at it yourself we're not going to have guided tours but i bet you can find your way through there's one way in and there's one way out so go on in and take a look at it and if you got some ideas to help miss wendy get with miss wendy about it um and uh another thing i asked danny and i know stephanie has a desire um doug and cat do communion every week and they do a great job but i think we want to build a communion team and give other people an opportunity to have the blessing so if you're interested in being part of the communion team <coughs> so we can work a rotation up or maybe just, hey, maybe someone, Doug and Cat, can say, hey, we're not going to be there. Will you cover it? We'll get you set up. Go see Doug and Cat. We want to build that team. Give them your phone number, your name, your email address, and let's, let's get this. Where, things are changing here all the time, aren't they? Yes. My goodness gracious. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for the blessing that you're giving us. But bigger than that, God, for the ability to bless others in the world, to reach out through the Internet, to reach out to opportunities to serve, to give. God, you're just so awesome, and, and we think so locally, God. But help us to see globally. Help us to understand the things that are going on up in New Jersey and New York. Yeah, that's, that's, those are horrible things that they just weren't ready for. Homes washed into the ocean and, and homes burned to the ground. God, those are middle-class people who are, who are the worker bees of the cities, God, that live in those areas. And uh, we just pray for their recovery. We pray that all the support groups go forward. Um, well, we know the Baptist Association is involved with that. But, God, as we look around the world, there's so many needs, and we are so blessed here in these states. We've just been blessed with everything. And, God, we ask you to, to lead us and guide us into how you would have us to give to affect the world, what it is that you would have us do. God, we ask this and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The good news is that it's not going to be too long that we're going to be in the presence of God. If you want to turn to page 150 in your songbook, we're going to start our music ministry. <laughs> Yeah. 
time of celebration, isn't it? In the midst of the madness, we get to know that God has still got it under control. Anybody like Amazing Grace? All right, this is a kind of an updated version that the girls went to Via de Cristo, and they came back and said, we have to do this song. So we hope you like it. It's not in your songbook this way, but it's going to be there one day. As soon as we get enough volunteers in the office.
took a break it was good um page 97 this one's in your songbook and uh this is the reason why we're here today why we're here to come together and worship this is one of those joyful songs that because he lives we also can live in peace in grace in mercy compassion kindness gentleness.
singing that, I was picturing these houses that are wiped down to toothpicks. And the houses that are sitting there in flames and ash. And I was just imagining this people who have lost all their worldly possessions and have what left but life. And because he lives, there's still hope. There's hope for those people. There's hope that people like us will find a way to send help. There's hope that in the worst of times that God will always, always, always see us through. It is so difficult in the middle of the madness sometimes to see God's hand at work. But I know that God's going to show up big in the lives of those who, are, who have lost everything in possessions and have nothing left but to know that God is. Amen. Um, Amen. This is a song that is one of my favorites that we used to sing in Via de Cristo, and we also sang it in the prisons. And it's, um, I think it's a call to action for all of us. And it's not in your songbooks, but I'd like you to hear the words of it. Um, <coughs> just the chorus. It says, Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you lead me. I will hold your people in my heart. In prayer, in support, in love, in kindness, in patience, in understanding. God calls us to hold his people, who is everybody, those who are hurting in our hearts, to know that God's love is still there in the midst of this. I'd like you to hear this. It's a call to action from you. It's called Here I Am.
Great job, guys. Thank you. Miss Wendy, haul them kids into the camper. <laughs> I believe she's still looking for additional volunteers to help with the youth. We'd like to have two adults in there at all times. Um, and uh, one to guard the door. <laughs> no. Just would like to have two adults in there at all times. And um, if you are interested in helping with the kids' ministry, you can get on a rotation schedule and uh, get involved with Miss Wendy and help out with the kids. It would be a blessing to the kids and to Miss Wendy and to us and probably to you too. Um, boy, what a great set of songs we just happened to pick. And um, they go with the message today. They go with the giving. Um, the season for giving is coming in Christmas time. But you know what? I was talking to Eric Luyan who came and picked up these boxes. And the truth of it is they're not going to get there before Christmas. Because I asked him, I said, you know, it's a long journey there. They go on a ship. And he said, I'll tell you, the, honestly, they're not going to make it before Christmas. But don't worry about it because any time a package comes in, it's like Christmas there every single day. They are so in need. They just got done their rainy season. And the rainy season over there means that their huts are all washed out. A lot of their possessions have been washed away with floods. And it happens every year. And, um, and now they're going into drought season, about nine months, is it? Feli, is it about nine months of drought that they have? Feli and, and Rose are our guests here. They've been coming for the last several months, and they walk the bridge with us. And it's, it's, you know, it's not an easy life, especially when they live up in the, in the hills and the mountains. And my friend David told me this a long time ago, and it stuck in my mind. Poverty is not a lack of money. It's a lack of choices. They don't have a lot of choices. This is their lot in life, to live where they are, and it's not a lot of choice. Um, if you think about that and dwell on that for a while, it has nothing to do with a lack of money. It has to do with a lack of choice. That's true poverty. And um, we're going to reach out to them in the Philippines. We're going to start to reach out to those in Haiti. They didn't have a choice. These, these uh, hurricanes and earthquakes and tsunamis that happened around the world, these fires and storms that just hit up in New England, there's no choice in that. You go through it, you deal with it, and you do the best you can, and you ask God to send help. <laughs> and we know that he's done it here, and we know he'll do it elsewhere. He always has his people to come forward. Whether they know God sent them or not, the people still come forward. <laughs> I think that's good news. You don't want to have to go in with a Christian flag and, and wave a fish in front of their face to let them know that God loves them. All we've got to do is be everything that we're called to be. We're going to do that. We're going to do it because God lives in us, because it's Christ in us that he leads us with. It's his compassion, it's his truth, it's his love. And this morning, Bob's going to start out telling you about this little uh, mission that we have gathered and chosen to support. One of the things that we also chose to support here is um, uh, Miss Donna Mitchell's so uh, daughter just passed away, and they, they're building a foundation. You want to talk to them about that as well? Do you have a little bit on that? No. Okay. Marty just passed away from cancer, and she was a bright light in her community. And um, their family has built a foundation to support people who are in need, and I believe it's a scholarship foundation. And we have chosen as a church to support that, too, to, to make a donation to that. If you'd like to, anytime you want to donate to something in particular, either on the envelope or on the memo of your check, you can write Philippines, you can write Haiti, you can write yard sale. You can write whatever it is you want to earmark it for, and we'll make sure it goes to the appropriate place. Actually, Wendy does that. Wendy, Wendy, Bob's wife, Wendy, is such a cog in this church happening right here. I want you to know that. She handles the kids. She handles all of our book work. She handles our payroll. She handles... Um, so many things behind the scenes, and, and she doesn't get any glory for it, and she doesn't ask for it, but today I'm giving it to her. Wendy, if you can hear us, we love you back there. Good tap on the window. She does so much for this church. If you were here for the last weekend, she had all these goodies for the kids, and she really goes all out. I mean, she goes, uh, these New England people, the whole nine yards, you know what? She goes 15 yards. She goes 15 yards with it, so... Thank you, Wendy, for all you do. Pastor Bob, come on up here and um, tell us what it's all about in Ephesians 3, would you? We'll try that, Dave. But first, I'm going to talk a little bit about Haiti. Um, the Treasure Coast Baptist Association uh, has had Edser Thomas uh, come in. He actually approached the association. He's a doctor uh, who's from Haiti, 
His family's from Haiti. He lived um, in an area down on the southern coast known as Jacmel. And outside of Jacmel, about an hour and a half drive, because you have to cross a river, um, they have a family property of about 10 acres and a well-built old home that for years has been a place of refuge. Whenever there's been uh, hurricanes, severe storms, people in the community would come there and they know they could get a meal and get a place to get out of the weather. Uh, his grandfather, Prince Thomas, was the one that started there. And so there's a family tradition of community giving in his family. Now, Edser has been a pastor here in Vero, in the Vero area, for a number of years. But he has funded, out of his own pocket, a school. Because 70% of the schools that there are in Haiti are private schools. He, he told me he's the opposite of here. About 30% are public. And many, many, many students, or children rather, don't even have a school to attend. And Haiti, as you may be aware, is a very dark place spiritually. There's a lot of uh, Satanism. There's a lot of voodoo. And they, the people are hungry for the truth. And Esser decided that he had to reach the people at a young age. So the school that he's been running out of the old family home is kindergarten, first, second, and third grade. And his goal is to, they have about 110 students at this time, and his, his goal is to add a grade a year. The budget for this whole thing has been about $1,100 a month, you can imagine. But if you're funding that out of your own pocket and trying to feed your own family too, um, and, and grow this thing. Now, he has a vision of building a utility type building that can be used both for a school and for a church it'll be a very practical building and the association has had some meetings with some churches including our church and we're looking into getting involved with assisting monetarily and eventually some of us going down there there's several local pastors that have a orphanage that they're assisting in northern Haiti and they just got back from another trip so they're very aware of the mechanisms of how to make things happen down there utilizing local labor so we're going to keep you up to date on this vision but in the meantime Etzer has to keep the school going and I think this is where our church could come in if God leads us to do this and I believe he's leading me i you know, I'll leave it to you to talk to God, see where he's leading you. But as a church, we could assist him. And Dave has come up with a great idea that between us, why don't we cover a month, $1,100, so that the school can keep functioning until the association can kick in and kind of take it over as a co-op together with Etzer on this. So if we as individuals of this church can come up with $550, I think that's half of $1,100, isn't it? Then the church is going to cover, going to match up to $550 at this point. So hopefully in a very short order, we can give Etzer a check for a month worth of dollars to keep that school going. I was just sitting over here thinking about this. If there's 400 people here, if there's 300 people here, if there's 200 people here, there's 200 people here at five dollars a person it's a thousand bucks if if each of you i mean we're not we don't often ask for money and it doesn't come to us but if you think about how simple that is five bucks you know instead of getting the lobster next week get steak put the five bucks in the pot and we could cover two months yes we we ought to be able to do this i th I, I believe we can so um if you're led to do that, just mark on the envelope or mark on the check, Haiti, this is our Haitian mission for right now, and um, we'll assist him so that he can keep this school going, and, uh, and, and eventually we may have some teams go down there, um, people from the church. So there's a number of ways we're going to be able to assist and be part of this as a local multi-church effort with the association to make something good happen. And I will add that in addition to school five days a week, they also 
have a church service there um, for the children and their families on Thursday evenings. So they are getting the gospel. They're getting reading, writing, arithmetic, but they're also getting Jesus Christ, and that's important. So that's, that's where we are with that. Yeah, that's that's what we're about. That's what the church is about. We just Dave just sent off. He told you about the Philippines because um, he has a source that he knows that the goods are going to get to the people that need it most. And that's one reason that we want to work with Etzer, because um, Dr. Webb at the association knows Etzer. Um, we have a team that's going to be going down there to talking about going down there and looking at and deciding the best way to help. But we know that it's viable now and we can help and put it right where it's going to go, not filtering it through multi-agencies, but straight to the children. And that's where it's at. So with that, uh, we'll jump right into Ephesians. Uh, I will add that the association had the annual meeting yesterday uh, at the association office, the Treasure Coast Baptist Association. And get this, the theme was about mission. It was about being missional about coming together and being missional locally, reaching out to the community and globally, internationally, helping out where God calls us to. Let's not find reasons why we can't. Let's trust God and let go with what he gives us and do what we can do. Small, a lot, whatever it is, we're all part of God's community and we're called to love each other and we can be the light. Um, in Ephesians, we're in chapter 3 uh, already. Wow, we're moving right in. And, boy, this is some good stuff. Paul jumps right in here in, in, in this third chapter, and he says that for this reason, I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus, for you Gentiles. What does he mean by prisoner? I almost jumped over it. And last night I was looking at it again. I said the very first verse, the prisoner well, one, he was a prisoner. He was held by the Romans in prison many times and for great lengths of time. And he was beaten and flogged, and we've talked about all the physical abuse that he bore in his body. He said the marks of Jesus Christ. But also, if you think back in his teachings in Romans, he said that we are going to be a slave one way or another. He said, I put this in human terms so you'll understand. We're either going to be a prisoner or a slave to the flesh. That means we're going to succumb to the worldly way of thinking and doing the me, me, me. I'm in charge. Watch me get stuck deeper and deeper. Or we're going to turn our life and will over to Jesus Christ. And he's going to be in charge. And that's what we do. Jesus gave us that example himself. He said, I only do what I see the Father do. That's the model that he gave us, living out of our union with Christ. We are his prisoner, if you would. And that sounds negative, but we learn that it's really the most positive thing there ever is because we have liberty. We have freedom to be led by the Spirit and we're no longer enslaved to the flesh. We don't have to go there anymore to those old things that destroyed us. So he says, I, the prisoner of Christ Jesus, for you, if indeed you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which was given to me for you, how that by revelation he made known to me the mystery, as I have briefly written already, by which you read... You may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. He's going to tell us, and he's been telling us, about this great mystery that is so profound, it's difficult at times for us to wrap our head around it. And I really believe that God has to turn the light on for us, for us to understand this. He says, and here is this mystery, which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men, as it has now been revealed by 
the Holy Spirit. So God has revealed something brand new. See, in the under the old covenant, it was God with us. But this mystery is even deeper than that. That the Gentiles, that's all of us, should be fellow heirs of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ through the gospel. Partakers. It means that we receive the very same spirit that Christ has it means Christ in us it's not just Christ with us but it's Christ in us this is the mystery God himself indwelling us and guiding us so that we can share his love and his light with others that's our purpose here so that in doing so we become who we were actually meant to be. Oneness with God Almighty. Having the boldness to enter the holy of the holies. That veil being torn down that used to separate God from man. And we can go in as heirs. That means, think about it, that we inherit, we receive the same things that Christ receives. The same Holy Spirit power that raised Christ up raises us up as brand new creations the moment spiritually that we receive Jesus Christ as our Savior. Yes, we will be raised up again for the afterlife, but we're raised up now. We're already given the first part of the promise Paul says, and that is we already have eternal life. We have received the gift of eternal life. We are one with Christ now. We are given the very mind of Christ. And that is a mystery because we can't understand that in the flesh, but we experience it, experience experiential knowledge, not some academic stuff that somebody just tells you say these words and then you know and then you receive it no it's believe it believe it and receive it trust God in it we don't have to understand it completely to receive it he indwells us we become one with him individually and as members of the body of Christ oneness unity so this is the great mystery and he explains this further in colossians chapter 1 verse 26 and 27 the mystery which has been hidden from ages and from generations but now has been revealed to his saints that's us we're the saints you are the saints as believers To them, God willed to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you. We get to manifest Jesus Christ to the world. For whatever reason, he's decided to work in us and through us to reach the rest of the world. He told his disciples, he said, I have to go be with the Father. He said, but I won't leave you alone. I'm sending another, the Comforter, that same Comforter today, that same Spirit that lives in us and through us. I remember over at Safe Harbor talking with Denny Holrick. We were talking about our respective Alpha classes, and he said there was this individual, he was teaching out of Romans how good God is, how we aren't our old selves anymore, that we are dead to sin, that we are brand new creations. And this one individual, this one man said, I don't know if I believe that or not. He said, kind of indicated to Denny that Denny might be taking this out of context. You know, he might be taking a little snippet and spinning it some other way. 
He said, so I, I really didn't believe you, Denny. He said, but I went, I went and read Corinthians. I don't know which one, whether it was first or second. But he said, I went and read Corinthians. He said, and it says the same thing. And then he said, yeah. He says, now go read Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians. Continue. Read the Gospels. It's all the good news. God doesn't switch around. He doesn't flip-flop like politicians. God's word is true. And the message is all the way through from Genesis to Revelations that he had a plan. We screwed it up. He redeemed us. It wasn't us making ourselves better. It was him coming down in human form through Jesus Christ, fulfilling the law, completing the work, taking our punishment, dying for our sins, being raised up so that we can have his righteousness, his righteousness imputed to us. We don't earn it, but we get to receive it. That's why it's called a free gift. And this is the free gift that's going to set the world free, the truth that's going to set the world free and that's setting people free right now, not just here in our country, but in Haiti, in Cuba, in communist countries, in the secular humanist countries of the West that have thrown aside the old religion, thrown away God while they were doing it, and are walking their own way, but people are seeing that it doesn't work. It doesn't work without God. It's not about religion. It's about relationship. He said that we may be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. He is our strength. It's not our own frailties. We don't need to be afraid about our own inadequacies because we were never meant to be adequate on our own. We are adequate because we're filled with his spirit that Christ may dwell in you in your hearts through faith that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height to know the love of Christ which Passes knowledge. I see people, and I have myself struggled with it intellectually. It surpasses human knowledge. That's why God has to turn the light on, that you may be filled with the fullness of God. He doesn't say, I'm going to give you this little speck, this little character trait, this a little piece. He said the fullness of God. That's what he's given us. Now, to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us, to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. And that's being manifested today with us here. With us reaching out, we're continuing this same gospel message that set people free is setting them free today. God's will is being done and it will be completed. All right. Good job, Bob. Wow. I tell you what, there's, there's something living going on here this morning. Um, do, do you really need me to go over the blanks on your study sheet this morning? Anybody? Yeah. What do you mean, yeah? Weren't you following along? <laughs> All right, I'm going to hit the blanks real quick because there's some things that I heard in there that just God spoke to my heart, and I want to want to share them with you. But um, the mystery of the ages is now made known, and it is good news. It's good news. Um, you know, it's going on 18 years now that I was one of those people who denied that I needed God for all of my life until 18 years ago. And when I finally gave up on trying to do it on my own, and I finally came to the point of, uh, I thank God that he gave me a decision instead of taking my life to give my life to him. It was really close. It was, uh, it was a fine line. And, and I, th I think there's a really fine line between good and evil. There's a fine line between salvation and, and death. 
and I was walking that line for a good long time. But I didn't want to hear about God because I didn't think I needed a God in my life. Um, with that, I, I saw an article, I guess, yesterday or the day before in the local paper about a woman who was a nun, and then she gave up faith, gave it up completely. And she's uh, now uh, with, I guess, a church of the atheists and humanists. And I'm, I don't condemn her, and it, but it bothers me because uh, there was a fellow and I speaking this morning about it. What what scares scared her away was the rules and regulations. It's what we've talked about all the time. What got her to turn away was that she wasn't set free. She was put into a religious bondage. And when you enter into a covenant or a, a convent, <laughs> you enter into a set of written rules that says this is how you will be. And if not, then we're going to condemn you each time you don't. And it's really sad that we as believers are willing to put other people in bondage when we've been set free. We've been given this mystery of freedom. That's the mystery that Bob was talking about. And, and when, he, when he spoke, he said, we're to be a part of the body of Christ and share in his promise. Well, his promise is freedom. His promise is life. Genuine, true, real life. For the first time in our lives, his promise is to be connected to real life. And that is the Spirit of God. What I heard in that was this word partakers, that we're to be partakers of the body, of the blessing, of the knowledge of this mystery. But my head works a little different than most people's, I think. What I heard is now that we have partaken of God's body, we are also to be partakers in building the body. We're supposed to be taking part in supporting and doing and giving and that's what god's calling us to do in this action today lately even more so how are we going to reach beyond these walls how are we going to take part bigger than that how are you going to take part in the body of christ what is it that god's calling you to do because what he's got you to do is going to be different than me there's a section in the bible that says we need one another i might be an eye and you might be a foot, and someone else might be an ear, but we're part of this body. And without the foot, the eye can only see limited things because we'll be stuck in one spot. Without the foot, the ear can only hear what it's close to. We all need one another. We're reaching out into this world to build the body and to strengthen the body and to support the body and to continue to grow the body. Are you going to be taking part? And if so, how is God leading you to do it? It's a pet peeve of mine, and I, I know it's a pet peeve of most people in churches. I say churches because there weren't churches in the day when this was being written. There was the church in Ephesus. There was the church in Philippi. There were the body of believers who gathered. We've separated us into churches and what, what happens in churches is about 1% of the people do 99% of the work. And we see it very, very commonly. We call forward and we say, hey, guys, we need some help here. We need some people to support this cause. Who's going to volunteer? And you know what happens? 99% step back and they leave the one guy <laughs> standing forward. <laughs> Whoever wants to volunteer, step forward. And everybody goes, <laughs> like that old army gag, right? How is God calling you? What is he calling you to do? Not in everything that we do as the church, one of the churches, but in the church, the body of believers. Maybe you're called to stop by and feed a homeless person. Maybe you're called to donate to a cause. But what is God calling you to do? I heard that with partakers. Not only be partakers of the body, but take part in what the body's up to the body's up to something big here and it's necessary to keep this world alive i'm not a political stand on a soapbox kind of guy i won't talk politics and it, and every time i hear a political little phrase i go cringe because that's my decision and i'm going to vote and do what i choose to do it's a secret ballot for a reason but i would ask you to ask god for his leading in it however he leads you it might not make sense up here 
But maybe God will go, hey, I don't know why, but God's saying this. If we're trusting God, the right person will be in. That's all I got to say on that. That's my politics for you. I don't trust politics. I trust God. So we now have access to God. You can speak to him. You can ask him for answers. He will answer. I know it for a fact. You know how I know? How I know? Because this little scripture that says, my sheep hear my voice, and they trust me. So God is speaking. So if you haven't heard him, my encouragement would be, stop and listen for him. I've said this, and I've kind of gotten off of this bandwagon for a while, but we have two ears and one mouth. I believe praying is speaking to God. I believe medicating is listening for God. If you pray for five minutes, here's a suggestion. Listen for ten. Listen for ten. I guarantee you he'll have something to say to you. I know it. I know he will. We can approach him with confidence, knowing this, that he's never going to leave us or forsake us. He'll never steer us wrong. He will always, always, always meet our needs, not our greeds. We are to be filled with the fullness of God. How full is full? <laughs> Thanksgiving's coming, folk. <laughs> you tell us how full is full when you can be filled no more. But God's bigger than that because he'll fill you to overflowing. And then his love, his grace, his mercy, his compassion will flow through you, out of you, as you're filled with him. The way Christ lives inside us, as Christ lives inside us. His power is working in us and through us. He's working in you this way. The milk of the Spirit is this. He's letting you know how much he loves you. He's letting you know how important you are to him. He's letting you know when you need to make an adjustment. He's letting you know by circumstances, by his spoken word through your spirit, by his written word, how he's going to work through you. He's going to let you know what he wants you to do, where he wants you to walk, when he wants you to turn. I think people think I'm a little crazy here. But if I get to a fork in the road and I hear this little thought in the back of my head that says go right, I go right. I don't question it anymore. I listen to the goofiest little things. And God says, well done, my good and faithful son. You listened again. And when I don't listen, I find myself in a tangled mess every single time. I'm, I'm learning that that little trust thing, you know, flip the light on for God and begin to trust him. It's working. It's working. His power is working in us and through us. As we go through these scriptures, you've, give, you've, got a, you've got a treasure map here, just in this little study. Who are you going to call? It ain't Ghostbusters. All right? It's the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Who are you going to call? You call on God because he'll always be there. Who are you going to call when things get darkest? The only one who can make a difference. You can ask for advice. You can ask for wisdom from many people in the world. But if they're not steering you to the truth, then they're not steering you to the truth. Well, what if it's almost true? Yeah, what if it is almost true? Then what? If it's almost true, then what's that? It's a lie. <laughs> right? Well, it's got to be closer to the truth than, than this other guy. Well, close to the truth still isn't truth. The truth will set you free. On that day, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Huh. And Jesus said, what? I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the truth. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the true life. That's the good news, that you, as a partaker of the body, can take part in growing, sharing, and continuing what God started. So you've got your little time out for the trip in at the bottom there. Am I really allowing God's spirit to fill me? Am, and, and, and am I full and overflowing? That might be a good one to add. And do I allow his power in me to work through me? And I would add to that, am I taking part? Am I taking part? Not because Dave said we need volunteers on Saturday. Not because Bob said we want you to plug in. Not because Wendy says we need ministers in the trailer, but because God says it's time. Is God saying to you, it's time? 
It's time to stop playing church and start being led of the Christ. Is it time? And that's for you to answer for you. It's not a guilt trip. I guarantee you this. If you start to listen and God tells you step out and you step out and do it, I guarantee you it'll be a blessing for you and others. Guarantee it 100% of the time. Heavenly Father, Lord, as we come to the end of this service, we come to the beginning of a brand new day. The rest of our life, God, we count on you. We trust you. We turn to you. We listen for you. God, we call out to you. And today, it's my encouragement that we call out and say, God, how do you want me to serve? God, what is it you would have me to do this day and every day? Minute to minute, second to second, God, I'm asking for your leadership. And if you speak to me, God, I will listen. And I will step out in faith because I know that I can trust you no matter what. No matter what. Heavenly Father, this morning, today, maybe there's somebody who has a huge doubt that doesn't even know you exist. God, I ask you that you shine brightly in their mind and in their hearts, that you assure them, God, that each time they reach out to trust you, you can fully be trusted. Every time they turn and they say, God, I, I, I got to test this, God. God, I know that you're, you will pass that test above and beyond. God, so if there's somebody in doubt and in question, if there's somebody who's been battered down by religious rules and regulations, God, I ask you set them free right now in the name of Jesus. I ask that you open up their hearts to the truth that it's not about religious performance. It's not about rules and regulations. It's not about being part of a club. It's about taking part in the body. God, today, we offer all of these people to you. Show us how to love one another, even those that don't know you yet. Show us how to fully share the good news of freedom in Christ. God, we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank God for that. Kat and Doug are, are back there, and they're offering up the physical body and the physical blood of Christ. They're offering communion. It'll be back here in the corner. We did miss them last week. And um, if you want to be part of that communion team, be sure to talk to them. But this is the body that was broken for you, representative of Christ Jesus, the blood that was spilled out. That'll wash your sins away. And it's hard to believe until you start to trust. But when you trust, he will assure you he's true.
coming. We are going to work on page 50. Here's the way to work through this life. Put your hand in the hand of the man. Went to Haiti. We took him away, Calgon. That's not it either. He said to go to my, my life is in you. I don't know. Numbers are there. We always did it. It's all right. We'll figure it out. Pick another song, any song. Pick a song, any song. Don't sing it to me, man. That's not what I need you to do. Pick a song, any song. Do carry on. Carry on. All right. That's a good one. Carry on it is. I can't believe that thing is just. I don't know all the words, but I can take it. A group of young ladies came to talk to the preacher. 
Kitchen. And this is what they had to say. They said, Some of our members have started this carrying on and acting in the most undignified way. Maybe saying an amen in the middle of the service. Shouting out loud and it's making me nervous. Preacher, I've had about all I can take. Please do something for heaven's sake. Well, the preacher thought about it for a minute. a little bit under an hour and nothing really counted for eternity you see, see the choir you sing and the people would stand when an invitation came well they would all raise their hands so it says to the sister as he showed her the door I'll do something that's for sure well the very next Sunday as he started his sermon this became his number one goal to remind people by how it used to be before the Lord came and took control. He said, Don't forget, uh, on the back of your bulletin is all of our future meetings. Go make yourself at home.